Okay, so here are those six M's. It refers to machines, which is any kind of machines, fixtures, equipment, servers, databases, software programs. Manpower would be all the, the people side of it, the workers, managers, executives, support team. Methods would be documents, references, drawings, instructions, procedures, policies. Materials would be any raw supplies, tools, uh, templates, consumable items. Mother nature would be stuff like temperature, humidity, weather, noise, pressure. Those could have an influence. And then measurement. How is the measurements that we're taking, how can that influence our results? Sometimes the measurements are off or we're using the wrong tool or the tool is not calibrated correctly and that can cause problems. So what these six M's are meant to do is help you think about and brainstorm ways in which your problem could be happening or some of the inputs that go into each process step. You know, I've seen different names for these, so you don't have to use these exact names, but it's a good starting point that covers a lot of different situations. And there's going to be a little flexibility in what you put under each category, but it's a great starting point to make sure that you're not just thinking about the people or the workers. You're not just thinking about machines or you're not just thinking about suppliers. We're thinking about all those together. So we want to go through each of those six areas and, and spend time and talk about, is this applicable? Do we have anything that could affect it from the material side, from the method side? Gives us a much broader view. Sometimes when we're brainstorming, we forget some of these groupings and categories. And that we can put that into a fishbone diagram or cause and effect diagram. So sometimes we'll take a problem and we'll break it out into these categories. And these causes listed here could be the categories, the six M's, or you can make your own categories if you don't find those very helpful. And so when we're brainstorming, we could put them and it put little labels inside of each of these. And it gives us a visual picture of the ideas that we're brainstorming under each of these different causes. And this is done as a team to help build ideas and bounce ideas off each other. And then from there, we'll kind of lay all the issues out and then start to select a few of those to go pursue or dig into deeper. Okay, so you put the problem out here and then you start brainstorming causes or con contributions to the issue that you think might be happening. And then we'll start to dig into those based on the team's feedback and ideas on what they think uh, the priority should be. It'd be nice to have data to support all these, but sometimes we don't have that data. And so we have to select some to start with and then we can go see if we can find data to show that that actually is contributing to the problem. I'm going to show you an example here. So this one might be a problem of water consumption was too high compared to last year. So we do a brainstorming and we come up with mother nature reasons like the temperatures are hotter than last year. If we decide that that's something we want to dig into, we can go pull data and we can look up last year's weather and compare it to this year and see if that's true. And if we find out that's actually colder than last year, then that wasn't really a valid cause. Let's eliminate that. If we find that indeed it was hotter, then we could say, all right, that's one of the contributing factors to this. Maybe we don't know how much contribution it had, but we could run some statistics and figure out how much does temperature influence the water consumption. We'll talk about that method of analysis a little bit later. We might have machines like, you know, it's hard to turn off the equipment or you can't access or see leaks inside the equipment. And that could be what's going on. Or we can't see the daily checks on the pipes are not being done. That could be a personnel or manpower issue. Or they're not aware of looking for the leaks. Or they're not sure how to spot those. Or they're turning on the water at the beginning of the shift, not when they're ready to start running the equipment. So under measurements, we could say, I don't really know when we're above last year's total. It's hard to pull that data. So we don't have a good metrics or reporting mechanism to see when there's potential problems. The meters might not be very accurate. So that's giving misleading information or maybe we're being overcharged or undercharged for our usage. Or I can't break down the data in much detail. I don't know which pipe it's coming from or which source it's coming from. Or we don't have a de uh, leak detection process in place. So we're missing a process. 
or we have no standard developed on what we do when the machines are idle. So these are all ways we can brainstorm under each category. And then from there, we can start to identify ones that we think we want to dig into and see if those are real or if those are valid. They're just brainstorm ideas at this point. So maybe we find that there's some of these are not valid after all. But we're just trying to get all of our ideas on the table and we'll start chipping away at validating each of these. And eventually, if we find a couple important things, we might stop and say, these are pretty important. We can already tell. We go through a few of these and we eliminate all of them. OK, then less things we have to go through. Now let's look at the next list. What about this one? What about this one? We just start chipping away and checking off each of these as we go until we find something meaningful and, and important. So that's a fishbone diagram.